Hello and welcome to another StarCast TV cast. This is Elisa Gray and today we're going to be watching a game between Action vs. Sharp on Polyploid. Down here in the bottom left hand corner in the orange is going to be our Zerg player, Action. Up in the top left hand corner in the yellow is going to be Sharp. So we're going to be playing our game on Polypoid. Polypoid is a very large map that's pretty standard. The uh, It has rotational symmetry, so your natural is always going to be clockwise from where you start. So in Action's case, his natural will be right here and Sharp's natural will be over here. Um, so naturally, uh, you want to send your first overlord the opposite direction of your natural so that you hit your opponent's natural first. Um, and you can get your scouting off as quickly as possible. Based on the caliber of these two players, I would say that Action has a pretty big advantage in this matchup. Action is a very good Zerg player, probably tied for first um, with Soma right now as the best Zerg player in the world. He has a excellent Mutalist Micro and some really aggressive early builds um, in this matchup, so I would wouldn't be surprised to see that from action coming out. Uh, meanwhile, Sharp, although Sharp is uh, pretty good, his whoops, his TVZ isn't really his strong suit. He's for a long time he's got by on his TBT, but in this case, it looks like um, he'll be playing one of his weaker matchups. While he has improved a lot, I still don't have a lot of confidence in Sharp in this particular matchup. Action is going to be going for a very standard 12 hatch um, build into the quick pool and the gas. So this is going to be a pretty typical two hatch muta build. Meanwhile, it looks like Sharp is going to be going for a standard one rex expansion. Let's see if he throws down the CC first or a second supply depot. Looks like he opts for the supply depot first. Um, kind of a strange. It's actually a, very strange that he did that considering he scattered the Zerg first and he was floating that money. So typically what happens is if you get the first scout off um, with your SCB, you can actually just cut all of your, um, you can cut your SCB production and your Marines, make a CC on 15, but in this case Sharp decides to actually play Ultra Safe, um, which is a little bit confusing, but very interesting. One thing to notice, he does continue building marines while halting the SCV production. That's just to make sure that he uh, is constantly building up this marine production in the early game. Especially now that the, um, now that the game has gotten to a point where two hatch is so strong, it's kind of important. So fast lair coming for action. He just started speed to follow that up. And it's going to be the two racks opening for Sharp. So looking to get a lot of marines early on and hopefully go for that poke with his first medic. Now one thing to note about this map is that there's this very abusable space in between the main and the natural. So um, against the two hatch build it's a little bit difficult um, if the Terran walls off here with a supply depot and a bunker or vice versa. Because the Mutalists uh, can easily get right in this area and pick off Marines as they come out um, and get free hits on that. So it looks like Sharp wanted to threaten the move out, but his, since his opponent doesn't really have an Overlord, doesn't have a whole lot of vision over here, um, it's not going to be too threatened. So Action just chilling back at home, just droning up. He's not really worried about a Marine poke at this point in time. Especially because Ling Speed just finished, um, so he's going to be making a couple more Lings to go along with that. Uh, a surprising amount of drones coming out from Action. Typically you want to build um, up to about 8 Lings when Speed finishes and that allows you to pressure this front and do some other things. Like if he had 8 Lings right now he probably could come up and surround this and kill it off, um, these first 4 Marines. We can see that Sharp is pulling his Marines over here, kind of hiding how many he actually has. I'm not sure if um, Sharp actually, or if Action actually saw that, but here comes the big push, gonna be coming out very early. 
action needs to throw down two seconds, uh, maybe a third one ASAP. So he's going to get the first two seconds down. This should arrive. This should be done by the time that these units arrive. I love this play. Going ahead and going for the run by with these couple of things is going to allow him to pick up a couple of marine reinforcements and pick off an SCV or two. He actually decides to build an Evo chamber in front because he doesn't feel like it's going to be finished in time. Um, and the first one goes down. Wow! So much damage already. The marines are going to be able to pick off this second sunken pretty easily as well. Hopefully a couple more um, things are going to be on the way or the Mutilus will, should be popping out fairly soon. But uh, these four marines could do a lot of damage getting in here. Uh, Sharp hitting a really good timing with this and uh, it looks like there's a little bit of uh, hubris on the actions part. But he does clean it up without losing um, hardly any drones. I don't think he actually lost any drones in that exchange. Um, and he does have his Mutilus out, so not a horrible loss for him. And with Sharp losing all of that and having his Marine Cow reset to zero, plus losing the two in the natural to the Lings, uh, he's actually in a pretty rough spot right now. Uh, the uh, turrets are only just coming down right now because the engineering bay just finished. So overall, this is now the ball is in Action's court. Now that he has the Mutilus tech, he can force a lot of damage over here, force Sharp onto the back foot, and uh, just slowly pick things off. So remember I said that this is a very um, easy place to abuse. I'm a little bit surprised that Action didn't laser target this with his first couple of mutas, but um, eventually he will. He's just going to start doing any free damage he can anywhere, picking off marines, doing damage to buildings, just kind of generally um, looking at this run. Typically, you would build this third hatch at the third hatch location, but it looks like in this case he felt like he was too far behind um, in economy and didn't feel comfortable taking it out of third base location to defend it. Huh. I like this one fire bat, just trying to sneak around and uh, do some damage at the natural, but it's caught well by action and he's just going to be sharking around with these mutilists, trying to look for any particular move outs, trying to look for SCVs, etc. And um, if you watch enough of Action's ZBTs, you'll notice that he goes very, very light on things, usually like two to six in the early game, just to scout around and uh, get vision, pick off the CBs, and relies a lot more heavily on his tech units to do most of the work. Back at home, he's got a really early Evo chamber. Um, this plus one is actually going to be a really big, idea big deal, and especially with this plus one attack, uh, that signals to me that Action is going for an early kill. He's going to be looking for the 12 Muta um, critical mass and then adding on a bunch of links. Um, and once he kills off this first army, he's going to try to attack and, and basically kill his opponent. I think that's pretty much what's going to happen. And it's very likely that that could happen because Sharp uh, neglected to throw down the bunker. Usually by this time you do throw down a bunker anyway. Uh, but he's being a little bit greedy in this case, thinking that maybe um, as long as he just has enough turrets, these turrets won't be much of a problem. But Action still seeming to find uh, little bits of damage and picking off units here and there. And every Marine really does count, especially um, on this really low barracks count. Sharp seeking to only two barracks in favor of getting his um, tech up a lot sooner. Uh, it's going to cause him a lot of problems if he doesn't start um, actually putting some pressure out on the map. Usually by this time you want to at least patrol out here in front of your natural with uh, your first set of marine medic. And that's just so that the mutilists can't just sit here at home um, or try to dive bomb into the main. If they dive bomb at the main you can um, just stim your units and run across the map. And uh, it can be really dicey trying to defend without those needles. Still no third base from action. He has the drone over here. Okay, it looks like he's going to be making it now, but he's floating quite a bit of gas. That may be for some later on tech. He's got his hive down. Second Evo chamber coming down as well. So it looks like he might be going for a 1-2 timing. Uh, a little bit bizarre from here, but... I think maybe because Sharp still hasn't moved out, uh, Action is realizing that he can't really win with a big Mutalist Sling attack. 
his opponent's probably going to be having the vessels out pretty soon, so it's best to just go ahead and get up to that higher attack, but it is uh, interesting to note that he is skipping the lurker attack, so he's going straight into Hive, um, going straight into the Defiler and the Ultraless Cavern, so that's a little bit surprising. Uh, full on Crazy Zerg here. But Crazy Zerg can work if you buy enough time with these needle assemblings, and so far he's doing a really good job. He's killed off all of the turrets in this natural expansion. Um, another thing to note is that when you get plus one on Mutalis, 11 Mutalis will two-shot a turret, so that's why you're seeing him um, kill off these turrets so easily and be able to do a lot more damage in the natural. Usually if you want to fight these marines um, head on, you'll want to be going for the plus one carapace for your flyers. But in this case, it looks like he's going for something a little safer. An extra sunken colony just for safety. This army can potentially bust it, um, which is why he's still continuing to make sunken colonies. But he does have this flank of lings out here, which is really good because it not only cuts off reinforcements, but it also allows him to sandwich this army in between the sunkens and his army back here if Sharp does decide to go for a bust. So the third base now being targeted right now, Sharp sees it, but the Nidus Canal is going up. Will he have enough units in time? The consume is almost done. He does have a defiler and a couple of links in position. If he can get them onto the ramp in time, he might actually be okay. Feign some pressure right over here right now, picking off a couple of medics. That's actually a pretty big deal, is picking off the medics. Um, and every single time he does this, he's just trying to keep the Terran army from actually going up the ramp. And he's actually going to get the Dark Storm down on the ramp, and Terran can't move up this uh, ramp anymore. So that's the end of this pressure. This third base is actually completely safe now. Um, we do have one Science Vessel out, second one on the way. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about Sharp's low count of barracks. I wonder if he's actually um, a little bit low on SCVs. It does look like he's a little bit low on SCVs. There were a lot of SCVs killed off by the Mutalist, but I think Sharp actually floods a little bit in his macro, so... Um, despite the fact that he has only been producing off of a couple of barracks, he really just doesn't have a whole lot of money to do anything with. You know, still out just looking around, but we already have Ultralis out, and they already have the ar armor upgrades, so they're plus four armor, and the second armor upgrade is about to finish. If these Ultralis get anywhere near the natural, it's gonna spell disaster for Sharp right now. Um, but it looks like Sharp actually opting to go for very fast vultures, so he's going to go ahead and start trying to get the contain up. Good Irradiate is going to push back these Mutalists, but at this point, this is what you want as the Zerg players. You want the Terran player to start using Irradiates on the Mutalists instead of the important units, uh, like the Defilers, like the Ultralists. Right now, Sharp does have a, a decent amount of control, but he doesn't really have enough control to realistically defend all these places. Usually, with this type of play, you want to get a big army and just camp it outside this third, um, and get another army and camp it outside this natural. And then you basically just start laying mines starting over here, um, and then over here, and then you can tech up to a much stronger third army while taking a third base. But in this case, he really just doesn't have much of an army, and um, he's really having a hard time actually laying mines in places that matter. Like, this is really not an important place to lay mines. Um, this could be a different style of sharp, trying to prevent counterattacks, but in this case, it's really just not good. And all these mutalists being able to pick off the SCD of the third? Gonna be able to deny that base, but I mean, honestly, should be. Yeah, okay, the CC is in the main base anyway, so. Well, just a little bit surprising from Sharp right now. He, he seems to be floating a little bit of money. There's this group of units just kind of hanging out down here. Um, overall, Sharp doesn't quite seem on his game, but he does get the Uradiate off on this Ultra. He is keeping up a little bit of pressure at this third base. I'm getting really worried for him because right now the upgrades are hugely in Zerg's favor. They have Ultralis out, they have the Defilers out, and the vessel count is really not where it needs to be yet, so this is becoming increasingly dire for Sharp. Sharp is going to be landing his third base pretty soon, but 
at this point in the game, you really should be up to four or even five or six bases as the Zer or as the Terran player. And you can see he's actually floating a lot of money now, going up to 1400, just not spending his money very well. Um, and it looks like Sharp is actually just kind of lost in the macro, just trying to keep up with so many things at once. This is kind of what Flash and Last did for a long time, where they would do this mech switch with a lot of Marines, um, while also getting the uh, Ultras out to lay a bunch of mines. And I just don't think that Sharp has the APM to do that sort of thing. So right now, there's going to be a big attack incoming. Going to be um, these mines are going to be doing some work, um, definitely softening up the just a little bit, but it's. A defiler is gonna get oh he misses he misses the spider mine and uh with this defiler here this defiler is gonna be able to cast some really early um dark swarms in here and with more links coming up this could actually be a really big deal the third base has had to lift already and have some of the science vessels going down sharp having to bring his entire army home and suddenly this fourth base is going down without any contest at all Scientist was just kind of flying around doing nothing um, right now. While these units are going to get into the fourth, they're going to have to cancel this um, third CC. They do, but I mean, the damage has already been done. The third's been lifted right now. There's no mining at this base, and now it's just a free conga line of Zerg units. It's another defiler here, almost at the natural. I mean, this is basically the end already. At this point, Sharp has already lost the game, and uh, with how few Iridates he has, combined with the fact that there's not really a whole lot of room to back up in his base, this game is all but over. He's going to try to keep an army over here to prevent reinforcements and just try to pick off these Ultras with the units that he has, but I mean, to be honest, this is already such a bad spot for him that he may not recover, and meanwhile, Action getting up his fourth base going to be getting more... Um, economy going for himself his upgrades are really insane he's gonna be getting all the defiler upgrades right now he's one two so really strong upgrades versus the two two of sharp and i mean honestly when you have these ultras and the natural here just killing off marines for free this is uh, a really rough place to be they're just hanging out right now they're gonna be able to maybe pick off one okay no not gonna be able to get off so right now, I think Sharp is stabilized, and if he can get up this third base or this fourth base again, he might be all right. Um, oh my gosh, it got canceled again, so he's gonna have to build it on the low ground and float it over. But if he can get this fourth base up again, maybe this game can get to a solid even point. But he's lost so much map control; he's hiding in his base, um, just trying to survive. And constant floods of wings and ultras is eventually gonna become too much for him. Um, especially since um, it's very easy to just bring the defilers straight on. There's really nothing to intercept them or stop them. The needles are still up to pick off any of these flying buildings that are scouting around. Uh, we do not have Overlord speed for action right now. But right now he's just spending it tons of money into ground units. He's not even really thinking about drops right now. Good fight on these science vessels, gonna make it a lot easier to kill them off a little bit later in the game. And meanwhile, Zerg is also taking a fifth. I wouldn't be surprised to see a sixth coming in pretty soon as well. Um, and these um, vultures are actually kind of slowly getting some stuff done, but. As long as there are swarms anywhere near the Terran base, it becomes a problem, and there's absolutely no pressure on the Zerg. I'm really surprised to not see Sharp make any dropships right now. He really does need some dropships. He's got plenty of vessels right now. Uh, five to six is kind of the magic number that you're looking for, unless you're going for SK Terran, in which case you usually get up to about eight. But in this case, he could really just use a couple of dropships to put pressure back onto the Zerg, and... Uh, himself from just continually bleeding units and it's just a never-ending stream of units right now and Sharp just doesn't have an answer he doesn't not getting good enough 
radiates on all these ultras and the defilers. What you want to do is usually scan ahead, um, find these defilers ahead of time, and then go ahead and irradiate them so that they die before they even get to natural. But there's so much stuff and it's running over this third base right now. Third base is being forced to lift. This lane canceling the uh, fourth from landing. And this is just too much pressure. It looks like Sharp is going to be going down. Well played from action, just doing plays even on this frontal factory as well. And just a very well played game by um, action going for this crazy Zerg and just overwhelming his opponent once he got the tech that he needed to get up. So very, very well played by action and Sharp is probably going to GG. Uh, as soon as he loses his army, which really shouldn't be very long, especially with the next storm coming up. And it's flooding across the map right now, and Sharp is going to run out of money pretty soon. The supplies tell all of the story. At this point, Terran should be up by 2030 supply, but in this case, he's down by 2030 supply. It's just, it's not going to work for him. Irradiated Ultra underneath the cloud doing so much damage, just gonna kill off everything in its path. This is just, this is absolutely brutal, and at this point, there's no coming back for Sharp. If at this moment he had a drop going to the third or maybe canceling this fourth, that might have worked, but no bueno. Good job by action. Very well played by him, just kind of recognizing where his advantages were in the tech and using that to his complete advantage. You so much for watching and i hope you have a great day if you want to watch more starcast tv hit that subscribe button and keep watching this is elisa gray bye